Hey guys, it's Mapple here once again, and um, yeah, sorry that this uh, little announcement wrap-up video is a bit late, uh, you know, I did a 10-hour patch drunk note stream that resulted in a mild hangover, and then I was busy with a um, few other things and playing the game, trying to wrap up one more character, of which there'll be a video on soon, and um, hopefully some other videos too, so definitely, you know, like, trying to rate the league characters and all that and uh also probably the start of video as always either way lake of calandra finally announced and um it looked pretty damn good i felt fairly you know justified in believing in ggg this entire time everyone's like oh no balance manifesto worst thing ever um but i knew around the corner there was going to be some content and some nice um, revamps and everything. And um, the league mechanic itself, first of all, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that looks kind of like a synthesis to me, like a more synthesis-like um, uh, building of your zone sort of thing, just a bit more streamlined. So uh, I was um, thinking that's going to be pretty good because, uh, I mean, there's lots of extra mobs and uh, synthesis was overall a pretty good mechanic. It just had lots of its own issues. Maybe this will be a really good mechanic with some different issues of its own or maybe no issues. Either way, um, some of the loot and stuff that's going to come from it is going to be insane. So to go over the basic video, what we had is Calandra Challenge League. Um, you basically are going to be running around a Occasionally adding to your end Calandra map um, just from each zone that you do pretty much make a choice or two about what kind of content you're going to put in this thing and then eventually run it. So it's kind of like synthesis meets incursion, I guess you could say. Um, and then in the end, once it's ready, you can either just store it straight away uh, or go ahead and um, run it. It'll get pretty difficult and it will hopefully give you some really cool loot. And then there will be a new sort of crafting mechanic at the end of it as well, which um, either lets you, so there's plenty of stuff to do with it, either lets you um, like mirror one of your particular items. So a ring that you may have or an amulet that you may have. So jewelry, I think it specifically is. Um, and then have like randomized ups and downs uh, and it looks like it's going to be some pretty nutty stuff so i think to begin with it can also just most of the time give you an option of taking uh, a ring or an amulet that's going to be mirrored um, and going to be you know potentially good or bad you can pick either one um, but then the rarer outcome is to put one of your own items in there that then get um, unpredictably boosted or unboosted so straight away obviously the minus lightning res means that things like doriani's prototype are going to be quite a bit easier um, to min max or to even just build heavily into uh, if you can get rings with you know minus fucking 80 lightning res minus 90 lightning res something like that a uh, couple of those and you've already maxed out your Doriani's comfortably so that shit's going to be nuts um, and then there's going to be lots and lots of uh, niche uses because um, prior to this it's been pr pretty much impossible to get negatives in many different um, sort of stat categories and this might potentially open up a bunch of other cool shit likewise though obviously the doubles you can get like 150 life in a ring shit like that it's gonna make some pretty crazy items of course there's gonna be you know fat rng so yeah you're gonna see lots of crap but hopefully you'll find a few items that have more upsides than downsides or cor the correct upsides for your character with the downsides that don't do anything uh, necessarily bad uh, i do think on the low end there's gonna be plenty of examples you know even just losing some res if you can overcome it and make it so the rest of it's worth using then you know cool shit uh definitely i think this is a uh, gonna be a cool mechanic to make up for recombinators granted recombinators are probably still more op as a whole because they let everyone gear up almost every slot uh to like some crazy crazy levels uh but hey whatever next mechanic let's go and this is another example that they're giving us of what could happen some pretty big stuff obviously not always going to be the right outcomes that you want not always going to pick the right stuff that you want etc uh, and supposedly this is going to be a more of a rare um 
sort of option to be able to chuck your own stuff in there. Either way, Calandra League looking pretty good. Um, they then went over all this kind of stuff. So they, on the list, they had end game improvements, new uniques, unique item rebalance, a couple of skills, um, and then revamped content. Let's just um, keep moving through. So the end game improvements is essentially um, going to give these memory things that you find and it's going to prompt and promote you to kind of run different maps because what you'll do is i don't know if they actually uh, highlighted it yet what you do is click it on a certain area of your atlas uh, and it will snake away this memory thing that is just gonna put extra content on all of those maps so if it's like a breach one each one of those uh, maps down the line are gonna have like breach and then it's gonna get thicker and nastier and it's gonna be somewhat similar to what juiced versions of um the atlas breach or the atlas whatever content mechanic um, is there so you get to experience it in its juiced format it's going to prompt you to run some maps you might not otherwise run which i think is always kind of fun um, and then also it's free maps so like you're going to go talk to nico in this case and he's going to open this map for you so this is going to like really boost up your map sustain i think um sort of when you need it uh, you can roll the maps, of course, and all that. So I think that's a pretty cool one. And um, supposedly they're going to be kind of rare, though. So, you know, it's not going to always be something you can run. But when you do find them, either you can sell them or um, run them for the juiced versions of various things. Seems like a nice little additional mechanic. Uh, and then, yeah, as well as that, you can also find a unique map that opens up um, Ultimatum Trial Master. So Ultimatum isn't yet back in any sort of real form, except for this unique map where you can fight the Trial Master. Uh, and so the uniques that are associated with them are back. So you can now make a Hate Forge build again, possibly going to open up some more new Giga overpowered builds. Who knows? Um, we'll kind of wait and see. I was never one to be playing around with that personally. Um, you know what we're even showcasing here? Uh, yeah, just, you know, there's going to be foil versions of um, some of the endgame boss uniques. We don't yet know how they're going to come about. Hopefully it's a, another good way of generating some of this powerful loot without having to fight the endgame bosses. Likely it'll be off of some other endgame shit though, or just heavily RNG gated. Don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, so far, that looked like pretty good end game improvements. Just a few uh, new unique items. So they've already teased a bunch of these. Um, some interesting stuff. So far, nothing particularly game changing. And, uh, you know, go over it a bit. Uh, these are Ziz gloves. And they seem pretty insane. So basically, um, yeah, Ziz won one of his races and then put the gloves. Uh, this is his unique in the game. Um, so you gain one stack of soul eater on hitting unique enemy no more than once every second and you lose a gain uh, lose one of those soul eater stacks every three seconds if you're not in the presence of a unique enemy so you know some bosses are going to be like phased and that sort of thing um, which means you might be losing some stacks but it's not too bad of a game one, one every three seems fairly reasonable and gaining one stack every um, second while attacking a boss um, it's only against uniques, so that kind of sucks. So they are strictly unique, like, you know, against boss fight sort of gloves. But everyone, like, on Reddit was like, or well, plenty of people have been discounting, like, oh, 50 souls. Yeah, how long does it take you to get 50 fucking souls, dude? 50 seconds? That's trash. It's like, why are you even thinking about the pure max, right? Like, even 10 souls is 50 attack and cast speed. Just fucking insane. So, um, it might you know, on the lower end of your build that needs the attack and cast speed, see some use. You know, plenty of builds are going to be blowing shit up still, so what good is ramping? None. But I think these can definitely still see some use. Obviously, no life on a glove kind of sucks, but uh, lots of attack cast speed seems, seems pretty good. Um, yeah, regardless of 50 or not, even 10. So each soul um, stack is 5 attack and cast speed. So it can go pretty high. Either way, there it is. Um, this thing is actually absolutely insane for early leveling into the energy shield life. Like, so much 
ES level 11, good amount of life, convert some of your life into ES. And um, that's going to help you start off your CI, EB adventure, anything like that. I think that's an amazing little leveling unique. So unique item rebalance for the most part, you know, a few little tweaks here or there. Um, the patch notes came out. We looked at all of them. Um, plenty of uniques are much more usable, much more like leveling, I think is going to be pretty crazy this um, league for your second, third characters. If you, you know, get the right uniques and all that, I think it's going to, you know, shift the power creep um, pretty high to just feeling comfortable in your leveling. Uh, just at a glance, though, for things that actually properly mattered, um, most of these have, like, real niche uses where you're going to, you can still build around them in their own right um, towards a certain couple of builds. So pretty much none of them are particularly useless, but most of them are going to be more on the leveling side of things still. I thought Covenant looked pretty damn insane it's got like a really high level added chaos to it so that's going to be i think um a great early game maybe even later game um chest and i thought this um shield if it's the way it's supposed to be it's going to have a thousand armor es and if it's not too rare it's going to be insane so this thing has like 2000 armor and 400 es and it's like a level 50 item um for your spectral shield throw your shield crush builds you know if it's not rare if it's not super hard to get like it currently is um then i think it's gonna be crazy i don't know it seems busted to me uh that's at a glance what i could remember and what seemed worth it plenty of other stuff was just kind of whatever and uh just really cool leveling shit like that really cool leveling shit really cool leveling shit um this thing looks like it might have some viability you know 20 percent chance to deal double damage and then blood magic that's actually pretty interesting and uh, maybe an end game sort of little item. Uh, the new skill and support gems, when they were shown off, I wasn't really too sure what to think. Um, still kind of not too sure. I think Alchemist Mark probably definitely going to have its place somewhere. Seems like an extra boost to your dot builds. Um, haven't even bothered really looking at the gems specifically, but um, that one looked like it had uh, potential to be used because it just creates an extra puddle of damage over time around an enemy when you attack them if they're marked and uh that's probably just free bonus extra damage something like that a uh, few new skills they're kind of lightning based i haven't really gone into them um to look at them closely but you know i'm much more of a uh, hands-on type learner and i will try them out in game and see how they feel and uh what we can do with them but they looked okay nothing too crazy um you know, it's been a while since we had a skill that seemed immediately broken or some shit, but uh, this looks like it might be a bit clumsy to play around with in, um, you know, proper mapping setting and all that, but maybe they're strong enough and maybe um, still good enough. They don't look kind of like... What's, what's that? Fucking Stormbind, I think it was. Stormbind's like the ultimate clumsiness. So they do look better than that. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see. See how it goes out. But um, they're good enough to try out, I think, at the very least. And the Overcharge is a support gem that gives you a lot more shock potential. Which um, kind of is trying to promote that dual skill playstyle still. Maybe. Maybe. That's all I can say. Um, and then the revamps. The revamps I thought were actually all really on point and particularly good. And I was um, pretty pleased with how they tackled them. It felt to me like they kind of, uh, you know, do have their finger on the pulse on some of the games still, um, despite what people say. So the Arch Nemesis revamp, um, basically what is going to happen is there's going to be less rares in the game than there currently are. Because... Uh, Obviously, Arch Nemesis plus a lot of the league mechanics out there um, gets pretty hectic, right? Like 10 rares on your screen with all kinds of, you know, various Arch Nemesis mods. It, it, it was a big issue. Uh, then there was lots of Arch Nemesis nerfs. It made it more manageable, but it's still kind of dumb. So they're trying to make rares more rare and more potent in um, the things that they do for you so it's kind of what arch nemesis should have been on release last league uh which is what i was saying a good solution to arch nemesis and how it should have been is um yeah it's it's more of a rare fight so it's not too common that you come across a rare and then it's a bit juiced up and then it's got a special drop so we're not just talking like a higher quant than just normal it needs to have like a special drop so you know maybe a temple mod maybe some um you know delve 
fucking fossils or some shit, some extra uniques, some actual, something that's special um, that plenty of other League content already does, you know, um, that drops in special ways. Uh, so, yeah, corrupted shit. And looks like that's how it's going to be. So I think that's a good change for Arch Nemesis and it'll be interesting to see how it's implemented in the end. Um, some of the more rare mods are going to properly be harder fights, but then also uh, reward you in a similar way to how Arch Nemesis did. So that seems like a very good revamp and um, hopefully that feels good. Uh, we then got Beyond. It's basically getting scrapped in the way that it was because it's just very old and they wanted to phase it out soon anyway. Uh, and it's getting kind of incorporated slash replaced by Scourge, which is... Um, uh, looks like a good implementation, so there's going to be no beyond. Instead, when you kill stuff, um, Scourge is going to pop up, and Scourge currency can be dropped, and then ultimately you like, kind of chip your way up to one possible Scourge boss, fight that Scourge boss, and then he drops some good special loot. So instead of the potential to see, like, you know, on a really juiced map, 100 beyond bosses, you just have potentially one Scourge boss, but uh, still plenty of Scourge monsters up to that point. It is a bit sad, you know, to not really properly giga juice your maps anymore with Beyond, but I don't know, I think that's fine. And Scourge is cool to be back, and some of that currency is very nicely um, reintroduced. And then Harvest, a nice thick Harvest rework. Somewhat, uh, somewhat of a um, thing that a lot of people wanted, and that is to have your Harvests less interrupting in your gameplay loop so you're going to be you know traditionally running around doing your maps harvest and you got to run in do the thing and then craft and it takes like a few minutes out of your life instead of mapping and it always felt very intrusive now you're just going to go in you kill some shit it drops some shit, you pick that shit up, and then you run away, and then you choose to use that juice whenever you want and um, have a crafting session. They are going to remove a few crafts here or there, you know, in turn, um, and uh, hopefully there's still plenty that are somewhat good to make it somewhat relevant, and it looks like there will be, um, but otherwise you can choose to craft whenever you want and harvest is just going to be a bit of a watered down version of, of what it is at the moment as far as a fight is concerned and then also you choose to you know it's just a quick fight you move on then you choose to do it when you want and you can also buy more um, of the harvest life force from other people and then do your own crafts uh, so that's all pretty good stuff that seems like about as good of a direction as they could have taken Harvest to uh, make it more palatable. Uh, the balance changes, um, I don't even know what this is. I guess this was the, you know, talking about the manifesto. Um, so they've made plenty of extra minion changes where they, you know, give you some cool minion items and stuff. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it's unfortunate that if you really love having more power on your character by default, they want it to be more like gear based as they kind of always have uh, in many changes. Like I said, it's a bit unfortunate because um, it means you got to gear up before you get more powerful and that can be annoying and that can throttle more builds, but you know, the power is still there and um, it's possible to get, but that's the take home message for the minions that more of your power is now being put on gear less you know, inherently. Um, next big change was exalteds and divines are getting kind of flipped. So what you've got is um, kind of reversing how you're going to use these currencies for crafting. Basically, you know, the crafting bench took exalts for certain cool things. Now it's going to take divines. Uh, and the idea there is that exalts are like supposed to be more used just for actually slamming your gear, you know, because otherwise when they're really expensive, you rarely ever want to do that. And now um, divines are going to be the more sort of expensive currency that does cool as shit. Um, and then in turn, what this change is gonna do, so they've also taken away natural ways of getting divines the way we did before. Uh, in turn, what this is gonna do is probably raise the cost of divines um, and also make good rolls on uniques and gear um, quite a bit more valuable. 
So I think that's actually a very interesting economic change um, and sort of gameplay change. It's going to be pretty damn interesting to see, I think, personally. Um, you know, you can be mad about it and not be mad about it. I think it's just going to be super interesting um, to see what that does to like various uniques and items. You know, you see a roll with a few extra percent better and you're like, fuck, like, that's that's a high tier roll i kind of want that one and um it's never going to get much better you know or if it's a low tier roll and you're like i may as well settle for it and you know just lose a little bit of power but maybe you want to pay for a bit more for the slightly better item you know it's, it's going to be interesting i think uh you then have trickster changes and they all looked pretty damn good so um TLDR about Trickster is he looks like he's going to be kind of an energy shield tank. So plenty of really good energy shield nodes. Um, this one here seemed actually fairly crazy. So you get a little bit faster, kind of like Tailwind. And then nearby enemies get slower. Um, but at the same time, they can't get any faster, which um, is actually pretty crazy if you, you know, don't know how that works. Um, their action speed is at most 92%, meaning if you roll a map with like a hundred in the, you know, with various map mods, a hundred movement, attack, car speed, all that sort of shit. Um, if you're near the monster, it doesn't get any of that. Like with a boss and stuff. That seems pretty crazy. So uh, I like that node. Um, but yeah, Trix's like biggest problem now is which nodes do you take? Because pretty much all of them seem super good. And um, for many builds, you're just going to kind of want all of the nodes. Uh, so that's going to be something to, you know, figure out and um, learn the new trickster sort of matter. Trickster looks like it could be just about any sort of build out there at the moment. Its main damage node is this one here, which um, typically is going to give you something like 15 to 20 percent more damage. You usually have maybe five to eight different types of masteries. Um, but with all that extra life, ES and mana on kill, man, this node's going to feel good. So uh, yeah, there's that one. Um, and then, yeah, then there's some new supporter packs with some cool shit. They both seem pretty damn good. We've tried them out. Uh, you know, one is a pedestal and a portal and some cool shit and makes you explode. Like, the exploding thing was amazing. Don't know if we um, have a good example of that in here. Here it goes. Yeah. So, you know, if you die, if you have this uh, MTX on you, then your character explodes. I think that's just hilarious. And um, I love it. So that's the spotter packs. So they're trying to, you know, try and do more fancy things that aren't necessarily um, just a character effect or something. Something a bit more interesting. Uh, so that's that. I'm not sure there is too much else to say. Um, Lake of Calandra. So there it is. And uh, that's the mechanic. And that's how you do it. And this is some some of the cool mirrored shit you're going to be you know finding, and some of the examples. There's a couple of there's going to be some new base types, but they're only going to be like offered as mirrored, so I don't think you're going to be able to craft on them really, unless vendoring three to one, five to one, whatever works. Um, so yeah, there's that one. Bit of skill duration, that's cool shit. The Atlas memories, the new gems you can have a look at, uh, some of the new uniques, and. Um, yeah, some of the revamps. There's the Trickster. And then they also announced, once again, uh, ExileCon. So ExileCon 2, the ExileConning. And um, it's going to be in July. And the idea around this ExileCon um, is that they'll put out or announce and show off the full Path of Exile 2 beta. Like, pretty much everything there is about the game. Because it should be just about done by that point. And uh, also the new league that's going to be there. There's going to be, you know, purely mobile. So basically, same as the previous ExileCon, but a whole lot more of the game to play and to see um, of PoE 2. So it's going to be some exciting shit. And uh, yeah, same thing as last time, you know, plenty of streamers and shit will be there. And uh, you can say hi, something like that. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go. I'll give, I'll give it a 95% chance. I, I struggle to imagine I wouldn't be there, but I don't ever like to 100% commit to things because I have commitment issues. Yep, okay, so that's that. Uh, I think it all looks pretty good. Hopefully in the next few days, I've also got some other videos for you in the form of like the build I'm currently playing, which is Spell Slinger Inquisitor and should hold up well enough in the new patch. Um, and then, you know, rating my builds 
start a build video and um then the league starts and hopefully i put some sort of cosplay together that is worthy of getting a small laugh or something like that yeah so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video sorry that it's a bit late about the whole announcement and everything and i uh, hope you're as excited as i am thank you very much for watching see you next time